Is a V nickel. Sweet. Oh, 1894, baby. Well, good morning. I'm here at an undisclosed location with my buddy Mike and my buddy Digger Dave. Greetings. And uh, um, Mike was just showing me some finds that he's pulled out of here. Uh, there was a braided hair, uh, 1853 braided hair, and an 1827 matron head, and a 1907 Indian head. Uh, so you could say he's had a little luck here. Um, so. There are some old foundations and old rock walls on this beautiful piece of conservation land. Uh, and uh, well, we're going to be here for a while. See what we can dig up. All right. Good luck. You Hope too. you find something cool. Find that gold coin you've been looking for. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what was that you were saying to me before about glass eyes? Oh, uh, you can walk with a wooden leg, but you can't see with a glass eye. Renaissance man. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's go get it. <laughs> let's do it. Well, I'm not too far in here. Uh, Mike's behind me a ways. He's over at the creek. He's uh, doing a little magnet fishing. See if he can pull anything out of the creek. And uh, Digger Dave disappeared into the underbrush, as Digger Dave's are want to do. And I'm just sort of out here looking at this overgrown meadow. I don't know how much swinging I can do in there. A nice little bird box right on the tree there. See it? Anyway, um... Uh, a pretty good signal here, and uh, kind of tough digging because they put down some gravel here, but I managed to get through it, and I turned up this little piece of history. Now, as you will recall, in episode 17 of Chuck and Dirt, silent for a century, I dug one of these. Except the one I dug there wasn't broken. This one's been squished, the shank is gone, but this is a crotal bell. 100 to 150 years old would have hung on a on a horse-drawn wagon probably mounted on the horse's uh, harness or something and uh, it would have jingled to let people know the horse was coming it's too bad it's broken well this was a surprise um, this was the little crotal bell that I dug yesterday when I was out with Mike and Digger Dave and we were a little blue to see that it was squished. When I cleaned it, the dingler came out. It was still in the bell. Um, packed in there with all the dirt that had collected in the bell over the years. But, unfortunately, it fell right out. Um, because the bell is too misshapen now. The opening is too wide to hold the dingler. But I'm wondering if maybe it would be possible for me to repair this bell. I'm wondering if I, uh, if I just took some pliers, could I bend it into shape well enough so that I could put the dingler in it and it could hold the dingler and it could dingle again. It would have crack in it. It probably wouldn't sound quite right, but it would be nice to let this little, this little guy sing again. So I may take, take that on as a project. Uh, the dingler is, of course, all rusted, really corroded. So I'm going to tumble the dingler, and I think since the bell's already damaged, I'm going to tumble the bell as well. Polish off a lot of this junk, and uh, and then maybe we'll see if we can repair it. Uh, but that's going to be a long-term project. I think I don't know if that's not going to happen right away. Anyway, that's that. So, 
but that is a nice little find. Uh, any day you find a crotal bell is a good day. <laughs> uh, so, sweet. I'm going to keep working here. Maybe we can find another one. There's Mike. He's over there magnet fishing in the creek. Sorry about the zoom quality. See, there's this big old neodymium magnet. The way magnet fishing works is you take a powerful magnet and you put it on the end of a rope, you toss it in a creek or a body of water, and then you pull it out and see what the magnet snags on the way out. It's a risky sport. You can lose your magnet if you're not careful. So, but, hopefully he'll get something interesting. Well, this might be nothing. Uh, pretty heavy chunk of lead, rather nondescript, but when I turn it in this particular direction, I see three rings. See that? Civil War bullets had three rings on the bottom like that. Manet balls and Civil War bullets had three rings. So I don't know if that's a three ringer, or if it's just some other artifact that happens to have some grooves on it. But it's lead, it's about the right size to be a three ringer. So. If it is, that's a little piece of Civil War history. Either way, I'll take it. Pretty cool. <sighs> Mike tells me that back there in the woods there's a foundation. So uh, we're going to go take a look at the foundation. See if we can turn something up. Well, it's been a couple hours since I found that uh, crotal. Uh, I've been messing around in the woods. Not having a lot of luck. Apparently this area is as most secluded areas are, popular with the local drunks and therefore full of modern beer bottles, pull tabs, uh, bottle caps. You know what communities need? Every community needs a free public drinking area where people are encouraged to loiter and drink. If we had that, then you wouldn't have people going out in the woods and making a mess. But in any event, I was just uh, getting tired of being back here. I was going to head... Uh, back out towards the meadow where I had the crotal bell and try working out there even though the tall the grass is tall and thick and wet. And on my way out, I hit a target. There she blows. Nice little flat button. I think there might be a mark on the back. I can't tell. But that's old for sure. And old is good. There are a lot of, I don't know if you can see them, like back there. There's a lot of rock walls. There's some old foundations back here. You think that's what they mean by salt of the earth? Wah wah. I know, my jokes are terrible. I think I'll take it though. I don't know how old it is. Uh, looks, I don't know if those qualify as threads. It doesn't really look like screw-on, it looks like push-on or something. I don't know. Can't be that old. We'll get it home, we'll clean it up. A little something-something. Alright, back at it. Well, Mike had to go. He's a dedicated daddy, and he's got to take his little girl to Girl Scouts. My little girl is 22, so... I don't have to take her anywhere. <laughs> well, we were just standing around talking about finds and things. Um, Mike found a beautiful ring out here a few days ago. He uploaded some pictures of it to our local finds group. I'll see if I can scare it up just so you can see it. It was really pretty. So, anyway, I'm going to keep looking. Not having much luck. Just one crotal. Well, that's a nice find. And one platy. Um, no old coins yet. We'll keep it going. Uh, I did just put up one relic. Nothing too exciting, but here it is. Oh, half a horseshoe. Not the whole shoe. It's just half a shoe. I'll take that. We'll tumble it. It'll come out looking pretty nice. So, did have one interesting find today. Um, one of my buddies that I was briefly here with yesterday, Bob, lost his pinpointer. And today, 
Mikey was out in the woods and I heard him give up a shout. He found it. There's Bob's trim pointer. So on my way out today I'm gonna drop that off at Bob's house. That should make him happy. Trim pointers aren't cheap. Um, I mean there's some that are less expensive than others but once you don't have one, oh my god, such a pain in the neck to find stuff. Gotta have a pinpointer if you want a metal detector. So, he'll be happy to get that back. Well, I'm back in the woods with Digger Dave. Just poking around here near this rock wall. But I did just score one little relic. This nice little thimble. It's not a sterling thimble, but it's also not crushed. It's in nice shape. That's cool. Found a lot of thimbles in the last month. Crazy. Well, got a tiny keyhole scutcheon. Um, this would be off something small, like a, I don't know, like a jewelry box or something like that. No trace of the box, just the escutcheon. Okay, where's the jewelry? I'm at the creek. Just figured I would shoot a little bit of this. It's nice here. It is pretty though. Oh. Alright. Enough lollygagging. <laughs> Do love me a natural setting. Someone had a little time on their hands, huh? I think when the leaves fall and settle all over that thing, it may tumble off of there. That's interesting. Well, I'm just poking out here in the woods, poking around. Not really uncovering anything. Um, just dug a hole there and dug like 18 square nails in the butt. Uh, but I did find this little feature, thought it was interesting. Have a look. You can see the rocks start right there. They go there, turn to the right angle, go over to there, turn to the right angle, go there, and stop. I can't say for certain, but that looks like an animal pen to me, like a sheep pen. The rocks around the back. You know, and then out here there would be maybe a wooden fence, fenced-in area. Maybe, you know. I don't think it's the foundation of like a house or anything because it's not completed. The rocks just stop. And it's not like there's scattered rocks down there. Brooks right down there. So I was just wondering if maybe it was a sheep pen or some other kind of animals. It's neat. Another rock wall back there. These are interesting rock walls, they're made of little tiny stones, but this is, this is very neat. This is more like a foundation. So, hmm, interesting. Hey guys, today on Chuck and Dirt, I'd like to recommend that you check out Tar Heel Diggin. Tar Heel Diggin is a detectorist that, as you can imagine, is based in North Carolina. I've always enjoyed his work. Um, he doesn't produce videos very often, uh, like once every few months, so it's a real treat when one comes out. It's been a while. I'm really looking forward to his next one. Uh, it was from Tar Heel Diggin' that I first learned about harmonica reed plates. Uh, he digs a lot of them. In fact, he's got a hunting location that he goes to that he calls Harmonica Hill, uh, because every time he goes there he finds multiple reed plates from old harmonicas. But anyway, uh, he's a great detectorist. It's a lot of fun to watch. Definitely worth checking out. So please check out Tar Heel Diggin. All right. I'm tuckered. You tuckered? Indeed. We're tuckered. But it was a good day. Let's go over what we found. Every day, do you want to go over your finds? Yeah, sure. Uh, starting from the back, some kind of, I don't know what that is. 
nice. Yeah, it's wearing up pretty high. Uh, this is kind of hook thing. Yeah, it's a, some kind of a two-piece button. Uh, we'll, we'll clean it up later, and we might get be able to get a better idea what it is. Oh, that pattern on the front's really pretty. Uh, part of a spoon. Uh huh. No telling yet whether we can identify what it is. Uh, spoon handle, <laughs> both plated. Uh, this could be the back of a pocket watch. Looks like it to me. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Uh, miscellaneous pieces of hardware, I have no idea. Uh, I'll clean them up and see if I can get some, you know, verbiage off them later. Hmm. And I might be able to determine what it was. Okay. Uh, here we go, modern house key. Nice little key. And this right here is, uh, looks like lantern stuff. Yeah, oil lamp or lantern. Yes, yes. And I can see the word eagle in there. Yeah. In reverse letters. <laughs> cool. So, well, that was it for the goodies. Cool. Well, then we had uh, Bob's pinpointer that Mike found. Unfortunately, Mike had to leave. He had to take his kid to um, Girl Scouts. So then we get on to my finds here. Uh, you know, the usual stuff, shotgun shell head stamps, uh, bullets, that might be a, a snap from old suspenders, piece of buckshot, just a bolt, or maybe a knob, it's got some grooves on the side to grab onto, so it might be a knob, salt shaker lid, uh, that could be a three ringer, I don't know, I do see three grooves on it there, it is made of lead, it's heavy, but I don't know, uh, keyhole escutcheon, Lovely little crotal bell. It's unfortunately got squished by heavy equipment, I think. Flat button, thimble, half a horseshoe, and a big old file came out of the ground. But that's it. Not a bad day's hunt. Didn't get any old coins, but uh, I'm satisfied. I had a good time out with my buddy Digger Dave and my buddy Mike, who unfortunately had to bug out, and so it was an all right day. Yeah, so I'll see you on the next hunt. Say goodbye, Dave. Thank you for watching. We'll see you at the next hunt.